we're able to say you know what let's give up all the cars let's give up give up all the luxury and start from scratch and for a period of about two years we shared one car look at that this is what you live with every single day in your house when you don't clean hello and welcome to another beautiful vlog from me mama hao mama Bella. welcome to mama hao unchained and today i am going to share a very special vlog with you i'm already on the road it's like five minutes to seven i'm already showered and dressed and on the road it never ends happy mother's day to all the mothers out there and today i'll be taking you to the very first property that my husband and i called home many years ago and i will be sharing some stuff with you i'll show you um any updates that we've done to the house and i will also show you the recent renovation that we've done there it's um bathroom renovation and we will talk about doing renovation on a budget how much we spend on that bathroom and um where we got uh, the materials from i know everybody's budget is different but i call this renovation on a budget considering uh, the property that uh, we have there and also um, bathrooms and materials how much they cost right now uh, I actually haven't seen the completed thing yet this is going to be the first time I see it with you so if I'm not happy <laughs> don't be surprised because I haven't been there <laughs> since uh, the renovation it's been a busy week but uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to like it but I picked the material, so I, it's just the outcome of the project that I don't know what it looks like, but um, the materials I picked, I'm happy with. So I will see you when we get to the other side where I show you where we bought our first house. And um, yeah, we will talk when we get there. I think it's going to be a very chatty video, this one. And we will do a mini cleanup session for all my viewers who love to clean and like to watch people cleaning um you will get a little bit of that so i need to go and prep that property now for rental we are going to rent it out um we were planning to sell it but uh because of the market right now we decided not to and we will be renting it again for a while and then from there we might decide to maybe put it back on the market again so yeah let's go clean up that place and have it ready i mean i could have got somebody to come and clean it for me and paint them but uh, i don't know i'm weird like that I, I mean it wouldn't even cost that much money to get somebody to clean it and um, get it ready but i like doing things myself i like being hands-on yes it's killing me in terms of <laughs> the workload that i end up having and all the pressure i keep putting on myself but at the end of the day, I like putting work in. I like getting stuff done. I like being hands-on and that's the kind of person that I am. So I am going to do the cleaning myself. I used to love that place actually. Um, we kept it very clean all the time and organized and you know, it was a beautiful home for us. So yeah, see you. I'm chatting too much. So see you when we get to the other side. guys this is the place that we called home for quite a number of years i've got my buckets here i will be cleaning quite shortly it is very small and you know it was enough for us back then when it was still just the two of us and this is the lounge and I think if I can find old photos, I will definitely insert them just to show you how we had it all set up. And it's a two bed, one bath flat that we bought in Midrand. This is in Midrand. So in the kitchen, we've replaced the countertop. So this countertop over here was completely destroyed so we replaced all the countertops in here unfortunately we didn't change the color we just kept the original color that we had in here and it's a black granite so this was damaged and destroyed basically so this whole part here was falling down 
So we've replaced that and now it's all new and steady. And this is the lounge with a patio outside. You just go out the sliding door and then there's a little patio where we used to have some nice rice there with a few friends that have been here. And let me show you the bedroom first. We'll come back to the bathroom just now. So in the bedroom, it used to be carpet on the floor. So we replaced that with tiles when we moved out because we did not want to have tenants in here with a carpet. I managed to keep the carpet clean mostly, but we didn't want to have tenants in here and have, and have the carpet. So we put in uh, the tiles and it's got a cupboard decent enough for guests or your child if you've got a child in here. And it just has a window looking out to the parking and we get one parking spot over there on the outside. And before we bought this property, we actually used to live at that flat over there. The one at the top corner there on the left, we used to rent that one. It's a one bed flat. So my husband and I stayed there for a couple of years before we bought this property. And this was our bedroom. This is the main bedroom. It's actually quite spacious. I mean, um, I'll put a picture of uh, our bedroom furniture, how big it is. And I mean, in here you could fit a proper queen size bed and we had a dresser on the side and a mirror. And it fit. So it doesn't look big when it's empty, but um, you could put in a full size furniture in here. We had a full bed, a full four poster bed, it should be two bedside tables and a dresser. And it's got a closet that was mostly occupied by my stuff and my husband used half of it and the rest of his stuff was in uh, the guest bedroom because it was just the two of us. So. Yeah, so these are the covers in the main bedroom. I actually think we should have painted these covers. They're not looking mm, up to scratch, but it's not a big deal. It's got a window and it looks out to the garden and the balcony. So now we've also painted the doors. They're looking fresh. And yes, let me take you to the bathroom. Gang, gang, gang. Let me just open the blinds, which are looking quite dirty. I don't know, maybe I might have to replace them. Let's just open the windows all the way up. So yes, this is the bathroom. I don't know if I'll be able to get a full video of this. Let's zoom out and see. So this is the bathroom. I will put in a before picture. I do quite like how it turned out so this tile basically everything in here is from my favorite store you know me tile Africa so we kept it very simple and neutral considering that we did not have the budget to change the tile there in the passage if you can see it was this ugly yellow tile so we wanted something that will not fight too much with the yellow tile and I think we actually do need to replace this tile in here and uh, some of the tiles I, can, I could feel they're starting to get loose. And I don't know why builders and contractors choose this ugly yellow tile, but I think we need to move to something new now and start picking materials that actually look good. So we went for a very neutral look in the bathroom and the tile also is from Tile Africa. I think this was selling for like 139 a square meter which is a quite reasonable price for a tile of this kind. It's actually a very nice tile. Not too different from the one that I have in my village home, but that one is a bigger size. I think this is a six by six. And the one that we have there is a 1.2 by 1.2. So you can have the same look for less the price. And we put in a new shower. It used to be a white shower. So this one, it slides nicely. 
to open up like that so now you don't have to worry about the door swinging into the opening of the door and then we put in a mosaic on the floor that matches the tile nicely and it's like a taupe gray it's not um too gray it's not too brown it's like somewhere in the middle between the gray and the brown and the tile on the floor um the mosaic there matches the tile nicely and it's got the white and we went for a vanity initially in here they had a pedestal sink so we wanted to put in something at least where you can put your stuff out of sight you know as tenants it sometimes it becomes a problem when you try and move into a space and there's not enough storage in the bathroom so we went with a pedestal sink and this sink i actually got for a steal i mean it was going for i think three thousand and i think i paid like 1700 for it from tile africa you know me at tile africa i've got my people there precious help me get this for 1700 it was a display item so um we took it off display because it was the last one in the store so they gave me gave it to me the cabinet and the basin for 1700 and uh we got new taps as well the toilet is not new but we replaced quite recently so there was no need for us to replace the toilet so we just kept it and then we replaced the tap and also the shower and put in a new shower head and rose and then also a shelf there for all your accessories in the shower and all your shower and sh uh, shampoos and soaps and that is me over there so yeah and we kept the tile half wall and I like this look with the half wall tile on one side initially um, the tile went only up to here um, but I thought ugh, let's just put tile also on the backsplash and make it look nice uh, and continue to the other side and we put in a new light and all the rooms have been painted in here we went with a white paint uh, just for brightness and I think it complements this room nice and the bathtub we did not replace I just need to wash it so that it's all nice and clean and then I'm going to take off those blinds and go wash it in my house because I don't think I'll be able to get them clean in here. I'll wash them at home and I will bring them back sometime during the week if I get a chance or on my way to wherever I'm going later in the week. I will pop in here and put back the blinds. But uh, I like how it looks. It looks very nice compared to how it looked when we left here. So the total cost for this entire bathroom for the tiles, the new shower, the accessories, the vanity, and um, the mirror was about 17000 That's excluding labor. Before I started with the windows, I sprayed the cupboards with an oven cleaner. Yes, I said oven cleaner because oven cleaners are an amazing degreaser. So if you have a lot of grease that is built up on your cabinets like uh, you would expect in a rental property, um, an oven cleaner is your best friend. Just spray it on your covers and let it sit there for a little bit and then you will see it works wonders for removing grease on your covers. You know, for some of us, cleaning is something that we not just do it for the heck of it. Well, for me, it's I do it for a couple of reasons. I do it because I love living in a clean space. I don't want to say I have OCD because I've not been diagnosed, but I, for one, cannot stay in a place that is a mess for a long time. Um, if my house is a mess, shortly very soon i will get up and start cleaning it and it's not something that i always wait for other people to do i will start doing it myself and what i found is that once you start cleaning in most cases well it spreads to others that live with you but um, for some people they're okay to stay in a messy place for me it's very difficult look here already the grease is starting to release from the cabinet so I don't have to do a lot of scrubbing so if you look at that look at how much uh, grease is coming out of here and I haven't even started doing any scrubbing so don't be scared to use oven cleaner on your covers especially if your covers are too dirty 
that's another tip for you. So if you're wondering what I'm using to clean my windows, um, it's actually not Mr. Muscle in here. It's just some dish soap and water and a little bit of vinegar um, that I use to clean my windows and it works wonders. So uh, that's a little tip for you. If you've got an empty bottle, just fill it up with some dish water and soap. I put in a little vinegar for that extra sparkle and it helps. Sometimes when I'm not happy or I'm upset for some reason, I do even sometimes get up and start cleaning. And I've seen my mother also do it, um, cleaning out of frustration or out of, uh, you know, just not knowing how to release that tense emotion that builds up sometimes when you are going through things. So for those of you who have half cabinets that don't go all the way up to the ceiling, this is what you live with every day. If you're not getting on top of your cupboards and cleaning them. Yeah, we've got some dead roaches over here and some roach poop. But I'll have to clean up all of that. So don't forget to clean up on top of your cabinets. You know, when I'm cleaning the kitchen, in most cases, all I use is dish soap and water. Uh, some people like to use a lot of chemicals. I use some bleach just for disinfecting, but in most cases, I use dish soap. It's an excellent degre degreaser, especially the known brand. Look at that. This is what you live with every single day in your house when you don't clean. Look. Grease. I went back after this and did another wipe with some dish soap and water and it was all cleaned up now. No more roach poop here. Look at how good it looks. The secret to having a clean shower at all times is to get yourself a nice squeegee to keep in your shower that every time after you're done taking a shower you just scrape all that excess water off your glass and you don't have to keep cleaning it all the time and then what it does is it keeps off the watermarks from developing on your glass and then when you get the chance to clean your shower then it becomes an easy clean instead of always having to scrub and deal with watermarks building up on your glass shower. If there's one thing every bathtub needs is a hand shower. That thing is amazing for cleaning your bathtub after you're done and even for washing your hair. And it makes it easier for you to rinse the bath after you're done washing it. And um, always remember to dry your bathtub and wipe it down with a cloth after you're done to avoid having watermarks developing also on your bathtub and always keep it looking nice and clean and new. And with basins, always try and wipe it down after brushing your teeth also to remove the lime scale that builds up from all the toothpaste and all of that. And also remember to wipe down your tips all around your tips and the bottom, top and everywhere. Keep everything clean. One mistake that I made when I went to go clean up here is I forgot to bring my vacuum cleaner. I'm someone that does not like using brooms on the floor. I prefer using a vacuum cleaner as it sweeps up all the dust and all the dirt without moving the dirt around in the house. So in here I ended up having to mop twice to get the floors to be as clean as I wanted them to be. I'm very sure my back hated me after all this lifting and all the mopping that I did in this space. It took me about three hours to get this place all cleaned up and after that I was ready to go home. 
you know, if we had all the money in the world, I uh, would have retailed the entire flat. But for now, we did as far as we could. And I think we might buy uh, the similar tile too. In future, do the rest of the flat with the same tile so that you have the consistent look. And I think people sometimes think uh, the tile is expensive, but actually the cement and the labor uh, might be even more expensive than your tile, depending on the kind of tile that you pick. So if we can get the tiles, we can always um, fix it later. And for a rental property and also for a property of this value, also don't want to over improve um, to the point where now you're overspending and you will not be able to get the returns that you put into your property. If it was a place that we are living in full time and for long term, I wouldn't mind putting in the money, but for a property that we are planning to sell very soon and also will be renting out, we are very cautious on the amount that we spend on the property in order to not run a loss. But we will be making some money back from the rental for now. So yes, I am done cleaning now, I'm exhausted and it is time now to go shopping with hubby and enjoy that. Yeah, it felt nice being back here after so long, you know, cleaning it up. I mean, this was our first home together and it taught us a lot of lessons. We grew up together in here, my husband and I, and um, it really put our marriage in and a good spot now um, but I think a lot of people or a lot of uh, couples would have given up having been through what we went through in this house you know when we moved into this house you know we were excited to buy the property and you know have our first home and with buying a new house as a first time buyer you get bombarded with all the unexpected costs and fees and I think because um, agents and, you know, all these people have been doing this for so long. I, I don't blame them. Sometimes they assume that as a first time buyer or as a new buyer, you know everything that comes with buying a new property. But the truth is most of us get surprised by all the costs that come with buying a new property. And then you get the excitement of, you know, finishing it, buying new furniture and making it look homey and feel good so that you can, you know, finally invite people and say, come to my house. I now have, have my own space. I'm no longer renting. I mean, going from a one bedroom flat where our furniture barely fit in there to having space, you know, to have visitors come and sleep over. It, it was a nice thing. And to be honest, we found ourselves in a spot where... We actually overstretched ourselves a little bit uh, where we started to struggle a little bit financially. But um, we were able to be honest with each other and say, you know what, I think uh, we need to actually break up the whole structure of what we think we are financially and be honest with ourselves. And, you know, it wasn't an easy thing. I don't want to go into too much detail, but... You know, going from a couple that has just bought a new property, now you're having people coming over to having to sell both your cars and go from very nice cars to um, sharing one small car. It was a humbling experience. And if you want to know how um, I felt about that, I, I, I'm getting teary-eyed right now just thinking about uh, the decisions that we've had to make then to say, you know what, let's be honest with ourselves and do this thing the right way. You know, a lot of people are afraid. You're driving a car that you cannot afford. You're living in a house that you can't afford. But you are afraid to go out and say, you know what, let me just start afresh. Let me give it all up and start from scratch and build something that is sustainable, something that I can afford. But I'm glad that while living in this property, my husband and I were able to say, you know what, let's give up all the cars. Let's give up, give up all the luxury and start from scratch. And for a period of about two years, 
we shared one car and when you live in Joburg, you know it's difficult to have just one car in the family, especially when one person works in one area and the other one works in a different area. But it did bring us together in that, you know, in the, every day we had to plan our next move. I need to know where you're going tomorrow and you need to know where I will be and what time you pick, who's picking who up and, you know, organizing our gym schedules. We had to go to the gym together because now you can't go to the gym at your own time because you don't have a car. You know, uh, it really did bring us together. But uh, at some point, I think my husband was starting to struggle because I'm very time conscious and I wanted to be at work on time and leave work at on time. But his work is so unpredictable that at times it was very difficult for us to function out of one car. But um, he started using the how train because luckily we have the how train station just behind uh, our complex here. So I would drive to work and he would take the hard train unless on days when he needed the car to travel for work and all of that. So, uh, yeah, this property really taught us a lot about ourselves, about how to manage money and uh, to go from that to where we are right now. For some people who don't know the backstory, all they know is what they see now on YouTube that I post out there, but they don't know the lessons that we have had to learn um, as a couple, as individuals. And I must say, uh, I'm glad that uh, I've had my experience with uh, my mother, um, who my mother has never been rich and she's not rich by any means, but she has always been a woman that has been uh, financially savvy and, um, you know, uh, lived within her means that it taught me a lot. My mother never really gave us beyond what we needed right she always said you know my money has an ending uh, i remember when she took me to varsity a lot of people will get uh, their parents visiting them every now and then to come and check up on them and all of that but my mom when she dropped me off at varsity all she said to me just know that my money has a an end point and she never came back to the complex to the campus to check on me she just said my my, my money has an end point and I knew exactly what she meant because I could uh, relate to the adjustment that we've had to make when my father passed away you know going to from having groceries in the kitchen and also in the living room in the room divider you know back then we had the room divider and the room divider was somewhere where you uh, packed extra groceries and we had that but after my father passed away now we only had grocery in the kitchen and when it's gone it's gone so uh yeah, I learned a lot from my mother and I'm happy to say I have brought some of the lessons that I've learned from my mother, being that it's Mother's Day today. Happy Mother's Day, mother. And uh, yeah, it's it's really important to have a good uh, foundation in your relationship. And the foundation doesn't just start from when you start dating. Your foundation, your relationship starts from the relationship you have with your parents, the relationship that you have with your mother, and how you see them relate with each other because that translates into how you uh, relate with your partner. And um, my father died when I was 10 years old, but I can tell you that um, what I've seen between my mother and my father is pretty much what I try and emulate within uh, my marriage and how I treat my husband and how he treats me as well. And I can tell you that some of his characters I can see, I have seen in uh, his parents as well. And don't think that your background does not matter. Your background matters a lot in your relationship. Um, you, you cannot escape uh, your reality. Yes, you can change from uh, here and there when you grow up, you know, when you realize that I did not like how my mother treated my father or those kind of things. But you have to have the awareness to say, I have seen this and this was wrong and then find ways to learn how to do it differently. But other than that, uh, you are a product of your upbringing. I say that a lot and I, I keep repeating it uh, when, with people that I hang around with that you cannot run away from your background. Try hard as you can. You cannot run away from your background. Uh, it makes us who we are. And in responding to situations, you either respond from what you have learned or you respond differently from what you have learned because you have been aware that what you have learned was wrong and now you learn how to do it better. And yeah, I think I've been talking too much, but um, I hope you have enjoyed um, this video. I think this is, going to be, this is a bit of a longer vlog than I usually do, but I think it was necessary to share with you uh, our background, you know, where we started and uh, where we are right now. And um, yeah, I will be chatting to you very soon. I'm traveling this week 
and yeah i have a lot going on in my life and i hope i can try and pick up the camera and record it because most of the time it's difficult uh you know when you have a camera in your hand things move slower but i'm a person that is very fast paced but i'm hoping you have enjoyed um watching this video and uh, i will see you next time thank you for joining me bye bye